This is Barry Zalma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zalma on Insurance. Today we're going to talk about unlicensed contractors in California who cannot enforce the contract for work actually done. A failure to maintain workers' compensation insurance in the state of California voids the contractor's license. And even if he legitimately does the work called for in a contract, he can never collect the money he earned because no license, no right to be paid, at least in the state of California and probably other states, as a condition precedent to the issue of a contractor's license, continued maintenance or reinstatement of a contractor's license, California law requires applicants and licensees to have on file at all times a current and valid certificate of workers' compensation insurance. In American Building Innovation LP versus Balfour Beatty Construction LLC at all, the California Court of Appeals on September 3, 2024, found that the contractor was unable to recover the contract payments because it did its work without a license. Failure to obtain or maintain the required coverage results in the automatic, automatic, and immediate suspension of the contractor's license by operation of law. In California, a party who was not duly licensed at all times during the performance of its contracting work generally cannot bring or maintain an action to collect compensation for that work as a result of the policy cancellation. ABI's contractor's license was suspended mid-project, fully aware it was unlicensed and uninsured. ABI nevertheless continued its work. ABI sued to recover amounts allegedly owed for its work on the project being conducted by the general contractor Balfour. The board accepted ABI's representation and retroactively reinstated its contractor's license mm. under California Code Section 7125.1. The court needed to determine, therefore, if ABI was duly licensed at all times during the performance of its work. If not, Section 7031 bars ABI from bringing or maintaining the present action. In this case, the lapse in coverage was not beyond ABI's control. The record demonstrated the policy cancellation occurred because ABI chose not to pay billed insurance premiums. The insurer's retroactive reinstatement of the policy following that settlement was essentially meaningless because it occurred long after the statute of limitations ran on any workers' compensation claims, rendering the coverage illusory. ABI was on the project from August of 2017 through May of 2018. ABI concedes that its work on the project required it to be licensed and that it had to maintain workers' compensation insurance throughout the project in order to maintain its license. And when ABI began its work on the project in August of 2017, it had workers' compensation insurance policy issued by state fund. ABI did not pay approximately $33,000 in outstanding premiums, which state fund asserted were owed for ABI's 2015-2016 policy based on an audit state fund had performed in 2017. ABI received state funds notice of cancellation. It nonetheless failed to make payments. Accordingly, State Fund canceled ABI's 2017-2018 policy on January 25, 2018. As a result of the policy cancellation, ABI's contractor's license was suspended by operation of law on January 25, 2018. 
The record established that though ABI's principal knew that ABI's policy had been canceled, that its license had been suspended, and that ABI was therefore not to engage in construction activities. As for the construction project, Balfour Beatty, the general contractor, refused to pay ABI for its work. The board apparently accepted ABI's representations as it reinstated ABI's license retroactively, but the board also revised ABI's license history to remove the January 2018 suspension. The trial court issued a statement of decision, however, finding in favor of defendants on their 31st affirmative defense, concluding that ABI was not a duly licensed contractor at all times during the performance of the contract and therefore may not bring or maintain an action or recover compensation for its work. The court then entered judgment in favor of the defendants and against ABI. ABI filed a notice of appeal from the judgment. The trial court concluded that Section 7031 bars ABI from maintaining this action because it was not a duly licensed contractor at the time during the performance of its contract from July of 2017 through May of 2018. The Court of Appeal concluded that ABI was not entitled to retroactive reinstatement of its license because ABI applied for re retroactive reinstatement of the license more than 90 days, in this case nearly three years after the effective date of the Certificate of Insurance. The board could only reinstate the suspended license if the failure to have a certificate on file was due to circumstances beyond the control of ABI. Neither policy cancellation nor the continued failure to have insurance on file were outside ABI's control. It could have just paid the premium. ABI's representations were false. State Fund canceled the policy effective January 25, 2018 because ABI made a considered decision not to pay the premiums due on the previous policy. When ABI elected not to pay the premium due or procure workers' compensation elsewhere, ABI compromised the safety and security of its workers. It was not until over two years later, when faced with defendants' motion for summary judgment, that ABI agreed to pay the premium so that its 2017-2018 policy would be retroactively reinstated. The legitimacy of the public policies underlying California's licensing law and the validity of Section 7031 were well established by California court decisions. Section 7031 applies despite injustice to the unlicensed contractor. Section 7031 represents a legislative determination that the importance of deterring unlicensed persons from engaging in the contracting business outweighs any harshness between the parties. The result is a stiff, all-or-nothing penalty for unlicensed work, and therefore the judgment and post-judgment order were affirmed. In my opinion, the key to the public policy requiring contractors to be licensed is protection of the public and the employees. The statute is draconian, but it's fair because every contractor knows it exists. If you do construction work without a license, you cannot enforce the right to be paid for your work. ABI refused to pay the premium charged by the workers' compensation insurer who appropriately canceled the policy, notified the licensing board who immediately suspended the license. ABI's efforts to reinstate its license when it looked like it was going to lose the suit by presenting false testimony was ineffective because, at the time, ABI did the work 
it was clearly, and it knew it was, unlicensed. This video was adapted from my blog, Zalma on Insurance, which is available free to anyone who clicks on the URL zalma.com slash blog. You can subscribe to the blog, and you'll receive notice of every blog posting, usually five, sometimes six a week, and you'll gain access to the more than 4,850 blog postings. You can also subscribe to these videos on YouTube and Rumble.com. And if you do, I'd appreciate it if you click on the like button on YouTube or the thumbs up button on Rumble.com. Please tell your friends and colleagues about this blog and the videos so that they too can subscribe. If you're interested, however, in further detail about insurance, insurance claims, insurance law, and insurance fraud, please consider for a very small fee subscribing to my Substack publications. Thank you for your attention.